Hi, my name is Rick LeBlanc. I work for the Massachusetts Department of Agricultural Resources. I've been uh, with the department about 20, a uh, little over 20 years. Uh, I work in the division of ag markets. Um, I look at uh, simply that uh, I have two kind of dual audiences that I work on helping and that's farms and then the public find farms. And uh, so a lot of what I do uh, looks at those two different audiences. Um, let's see here. Looks like I got to admit folks in now that I'm the co-host, so bear with me. Don't worry about that. We can still admit folks. So you oh, can. you can. Okay. All right. Um, so today for got about 10, 15 minutes, um, I just wanted to kind of go through a couple of the programs that we have and updates uh, that are kind of uh, might be relevant for folks here today. Uh, again, the department works with USDA um, on the organic cost share program. I'm just gonna quickly go over some of the website and uh, grants and business training opportunities that we have a web page and information on. Uh, I do wanna spend a couple of minutes extra on our new mass grown exchange platform and uh, just remind folks about the farm market report and the mass grown map. Uh, so with that said, uh, let me see if I can go to the next slide. Um, so each uh, year uh, there's an organic cost share um, opportunity for farms that um, apply to grow under the USDA standards, uh, organic standards and um, uh, USDA uh, funds uh, basically a cost share program up to 50% uh, with a $500 maximum. Um, if you've participated in the past, it, you might have noticed it's changed. I think it was 75% up to 750 in last year or the year before it changed to 50% and 500. Um, and so we have a web page on our uh, department's page uh, that basically gives you background information and ways to apply. Uh, the deadline for last year was, uh, I think, mid-December, uh, and the next round of information will come out uh, probably assuming the summer of uh, uh, this year, summer 2021. Uh, so feel free to visit that page for information on that. Um, the next slide, I wanted to briefly let you know we have a web page with all our grants and financial assistance programs uh, on mass.gov, and it can range from anything from food safety to financial assistance programs, uh, grants for new farms. Um, that came out about three to five years. That's a new one. Um, grants to improve food access, marketing and promotion grants, uh, our um, APR program, and composting. So each one of those programs have, has different amounts and uh, ways to take advantage. There's also, uh, I forgot to mention the energy grant programs as well at the top as part of the food safety. Uh, they had them separated as um, programs and they made it easier to kind of combine those uh, started last year. So uh, most of these come out in the spring. So keep an eye on um, early spring, March or April, we start sending out information about those programs. And uh, as I said, most of those are once a year. Uh, next slide here is um, what I really wanted to focus a few extra minutes on is uh, our new mass grown exchange. This is a, uh, a business to business platform that assists farmers, fishers, food buyers, uh, ag related businesses to connect, exchange, find products and services. This is not a consumer initiated uh, platform. Um, we, won't, we launched it last fall with the Lieutenant Governor. Um, it, it, this, this application was created to facilitate these uh, business to business platforms as we had uh, uh, a lot of supply food chain issues uh, because of the impact of COVID-19. Uh, initially, our commissioner asked us to look at uh, an online external solution to see if we could help farmers with the platform and then in discussing it with a couple of internal folks and my colleague Jao Tavares, um, he thought we could come up with our own platform, uh, which I'm pretty happy to uh, share that with you. Uh, Zhao and I have worked together 
online uh, with our mass grown map for uh, uh, over 10 years. And uh, he thought we could create a, a no cost version in house. So we went ahead and uh, worked on it for a couple of months. And then we uh, unveiled it with the Lieutenant Governor last uh, August. Um, since then, uh, we did a lot of promotion in the beginning and obviously it was the fall and it was kind of busy crazy. Uh, we've had uh, over 200 businesses law um, register and uh, over 250 products and services uh, listed on the platform. Um, if you haven't been to it or seen it, um, uh, you don't have to register on this page in the site. You can just quickly, um, if we had more time, I would do a live, but uh, just to briefly, I just wanted to put the website on the bottom and let folks know you can just click on products or businesses at the top and see what, what uh, products uh, and businesses are listed. We, we designed this to be very flexible and, and as easy as possible. So again, you don't have to register. You can just quickly look and see what's, uh, what businesses have registered and what products have registered. Um, keep in mind, if you decide to register and list something, uh, some folks uh, want to just kind of register for alerts. We've created this system where you don't have to list something that you're selling, but you want to be alerted for things that do get posted. Uh, oftentimes, you know, can be redundant to have to go back to a, a website and look for things. Um, so we've added this feature where you can be notified based on specific types and categories that uh, someone might list. And uh, so we're kind of excited about that feature. Um, it's also designed for uh, uh, listing expirations. We didn't want this site to be inundated with just uh, businesses listing things and they just stay there forever as a long-term uh, Rolodex or something like that. So we wanted to make this fresh uh, and have it date sensitive. Uh, let's see here. Again, I went over some of the background of reasons why. Um, Uh, the key features I went over to, again, the scenarios can be um, if you're looking to post your crops or products, it's definitely um, most of the businesses that have registered um, do that. Um, you register one product, you can register as many products as you want. There's no limits, there's no charge. Uh, it's just um, it's self self service, so to speak. Um, we try to keep it basic uh, information on the business, the website and some details on the, on the listings. And again, it can be services and products as well. Um, one example is a farmer with excess potatoes and just want to list and uh, could look for somebody that might be listing, looking for potatoes on the list. It doesn't have to register, but then if they want to, uh, then they can go ahead and do so. It could be a grocery store looking for kale. Um, again, the buyer can just browse for listings of kale or that buyer can register. Um, so when future uh, vegetables get posted, uh, that buyer will be notified when vegetables are posted for wholesale. So keep that in mind. Uh, could be schools looking for farms in the area. Uh, there is a feature for the map uh, on the website uh, as well if you wanna look for businesses that are close to you. We tried to anticipate as many types of businesses and users. Again, it could be seafood, it could be flower growers, it could be apple growers. Uh, we've created a lot of flexibility in this. Um, so uh, if there's something you wanna do, um, keep an eye on this page. Um, you can browse it, and, uh, but we encourage people to register uh, when they're looking for something. Uh, it probably takes about less than five minutes. Uh, we've looked at other web pages and they want like everything from your, you know, your, your website, your home number, your cell numbers. We tried to keep this as simple as possible. Um, next slide. Let's see here. Um, a couple other things I just want to let you know. Uh, again, we have a lot of news that comes out of the department. Um, and that's uh, mostly disseminated through an email uh, farm market report. Uh, I send that out every two months. Uh, it includes a commissioner's column, updates on energy news, apiary, marketing. Um, it also includes USDA um, highlighted news or US, uh, I mean, UMass extension, uh, calendar items. There's a lot of things going on, as we know. 
And uh, that also goes to the mention of the calendar. Um, I try to do the best I can to list uh, related conferences in Massachusetts and or New England. Um, so if you do have uh, uh, an event that you want to get an extra publicity, uh, let me know and uh, we'll include it in the industry calendar. It's not just our events, but uh, I try to include uh, other related events as well. Um, I spend a lot of time on the mass grown map and the mass grown refresher. Again, this is our consumer side of things. So opposed to the mass grown exchange, uh, this is really designed for the public interface. And um, since COVID hit, uh, it's probably jumped 30 to 50% in usage. So if anybody in the audience is uh, interested in connecting to the public, whether it's a CSA farm, farm stand, anything that you offer to the public, you want to be on this map as this is our probably highest traffic um, uh, web page on the department. Uh, I think we were approaching or over 200,000 uh, views last year on this map alone. And uh, we did some promotion last uh, fall in the MBTA uh, Boston area. Unfortunately, it wasn't used as much as it did in the past, but uh, we did some promotion through that. Uh, and we work in different ways uh, each year and uh, promoting it uh, throughout the state. So again, my name is Rick LeBlanc. My email is right there, richardleblanc at mass.gov for anybody that's listening. And the website that I spent uh, a considerable amount of time is again, uh, helping the public find local, locally grown foods is through the mass.gov at mass grown. And I think that's my slides that I have here. And I'm happy to take questions. If there's time. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> I think we got started a minute or two late. So uh, if folks have questions, feel free to stick around for a, a, a couple minutes past the 12.50 time. It looks like there's somebody in the chat. Okay, that's a virtual vending session, all right. Yeah, so you can click through there and, and uh, all of the links that Rick has talked about are directly accessible through that vendor listing. It looks like uh, Ellen has a hand up. Hi. Um, I was just wondering on some of the, um, the local farms there, I sort of two questions. Um, do you have sort of a section where organic and or pastured is sort of, you know, delineated so that people know, um, like, I don't know if you have subject headings on the farms and then yeah. I have another question. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've actually uh, added different types of categories over the last 20 years and organic was definitely one of them early on. Um, we don't break it into, uh, we've always wrestled with having too many options for the public and trying to group things to make it easy for the public to find farms. So we do have organic uh, certified farms um, listed on there. And the basic process is, um, I didn't put it on here, but if you send me an email, I send you a, a, a quick, easy two-page survey. It's still kind of a doc version because uh, we want to make sure you, I put your information in per correctly. I also cert uh, make sure you're certified. So I check in with the certifiers uh, because some people kind of say they're organic and then not, they use practices, but not certified. So um, we do that and definitely um, have a layer specific for organic farms. So I could send you that link specifically if you'd like that as well. Thank you. And my other question is, I'm doing a lot of food security stuff now. Could there be or is there some kind of mechanism so that um, the folks who are trying to get people fed and healthy food, um, local food, um, so that would be, you know, part of this exchange so that we could, you know, I'm not a farm business per se, maybe, but I can connect in with that farmer who's, you know, kind of like what the Gleaners does, but you know, so how do I find out who might have some food to donate or, or offer at a wholesale price or even less than wholesale to, um, you know, food, food security folks who are working in that? Well, I guess with that question, I would encourage that kind of exchange on the mass grown exchange where it's kind of more farmer to farmer. Is, is that what you mean? But um, we, you know, we do map uh, hip farms that support healthy incentive programs. Uh, and uh, the food uh, senior and WIC uh, farms that accept those. So those are all flagged for those categories as well. 
I could do a whole session on all the different layers that we have on there, but take a look at the mass grown map and mm -hmm. see the different drop down options. If you do it on your phone, it is mobile friendly. So it looks for farms close to you. If you do mm -hmm. it on the computer, I think it'll also do that, but you can do statewide. Um, but obviously it, it's, it changes with the, um, the phone as well with space uh, limitations. Thanks. Well, feel free to uh, follow up with my email, especially if you don't get the farm mock report. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's chock full of information every couple of months. And then we send out e-blasts when something comes up, um, whether a grant, sometimes we get notified quickly and then things have to turn around quickly. And it's kind of a busy, crazy year. So we send out like quick emails to folks and it goes out to 8,000 emails. So again, if you have something that you wanna share, uh, to multiple farmers. It's really designed for farmers. I do also a consumer one separate for the public. And so keep that in mind. I have two, uh, those two audiences that I'm always constantly working on, so. Great, thank you so much, Rick. All right, thank you, Mike, and uh, everyone for joining and definitely let me know if you have any questions, feel free. <laughs>